old I used to actually fish in Shinnecock Bay with my grandfather. Well, first it starts as like a slow message in your head, like things seem a little different, there's a little less fish in the water, the water smells bad occasionally. There used to be lots and lots of shellfish in the bay and it supported a huge fishery. We had a brown tide outbreak in the bay which basically decimated the scallop industry. You don't see as many seabirds. Our goal is to restore the bay. That is the number one priority of what we're trying to do. We're using science to inform the restoration in consultation with our collaborators around the globe to bring these populations back. What is happening in Shinnecock Bay is similar to what is happening to the entire planet. Human carelessness combined with overfishing is upsetting the balance of nature and our very small bay is faced with very big problems. Harmful algal blooms, red tides, brown tides, uh, loss of eelgrass beds, and also loss of shellfish populations. Uh, and we know that all these things are interrelated uh, and in fact can work in synergy to get worse collectively. Ed Warner and fishermen like him are the eyes of the bay and understand the problem firsthand. Back in the 70s, the uh, shellfish population in Great South Bay was, was at such a high level, it would filter out the bay water, the whole entire Great South Bay, within two to three days. The entire community, fishermen, scientists, residents, understand the source of the problem. I think the first step was the overfishing of shellfish. Following on that, over a period of years, there's been more and more and more development. So the things that people put on their lawns, um, fertilizers, the things that come out of septic systems, all of those things have been pumping more and more nutrients into the bay over time. If I could sum up the problem in, in just a few short words, it would be too many nutrients going in and not enough live animals taking those nutrients out. While the community has taken steps to reduce the pollution and restock the shellfish populations, the success has been limited. At the same time, scientists have been working to more precisely understand the source and the cause of the blooms and the specific impact it has on plant and animal life, including the eelgrass beds that nurture the growth of juvenile marine life. One of the scientists here showed an experiment to my children that where they just very close to here took some water. The water was a lovely greenish, murky, green, yellow color. And as we got closer out towards the ocean where the water was you know, filtered more readily, it was clear. And one thing we did is we put some hard shell uh, organisms into the water that was yellow. And in a matter of hours, you could see the, such an improvement in the water, and then the question is, how do we replicate that on a large scale with the bay behind me? Konstantin Runtos, a graduate student at SOMAS, leads a team that gathers water samples of sea life from different sectors of the bay. So we will be doing a trawl survey, and it will give us an idea of the quantities and the diversity of the organisms in Shinnecock Bay, so that way we can better prepare for um, how things may change. The end result, an accurate index of the health of the bay, combined with research conducted in the SOMAS labs, point to long-range solutions to restoring the health of the bay. What's been created is what scientists would call a negative feedback loop, and what most people would call a vicious cycle. It's taken 50 or 100 years for them to get like this. It's going to take time to go back the other way. It's not as visually apparent to us to see what's happening in the water uh, as it is to see what things that are happening on land. And I think by communicating or, or having people like scientists at SOMAS explain to people what is happening, then that's the beginning of a great change here. The Pocomic's a multipurpose boat. Uh, we use it for research and we also take school groups out on the boat. Um, we take adults out and donors who have helped us and supported this work that we're doing to try to restore the bay and understand it better. This is something that's going to be a team effort. We're going to be putting in the science, we're going to be working on the restoration, but we're going to need cooperation uh, from town officials, state officials. Um, so I think the more citizens that we have behind the program as well, uh, the better off and more successful we're going to be down the road. If we can restore the bay to a modicum of health, what it used to be like. You know, not even all the way there, but if we can get it part of the way there, then we'll start getting a positive feedback loop. 
And as we improve the water quality, the eelgrass beds will grow again, the shellfish will be able to survive, the algal blooms won't occur as frequently, and we'll have a lot more fish. What you put on the upland portion of the island eventually ends up into the groundwater, bay, or lakes and ponds. I think a lot of people in their heart feel that they're green, and yet when it comes to their personal actions, maybe aren't so. So as we move forward with our restoration efforts, the goal then will be um, to work this system in reverse. Everything is connected. 